Good morning. Welcome to uh, St. Petri Lutheran Church this morning. After a, a good rain last night, uh, glad to have you all here, both in person and online. Today is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, and we hear some more teaching from Jesus from the Gospel of Luke. If it's comfortable to stand, I invite you to do so now, and we'll begin our worship with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are set free to love as God loves. Amen. We sing Gather Us In. The music can be found as hymn number 532. The words will be on the screen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. first reading this morning is from Proverbs 25. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, a reading from Hebrews. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So you can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of, our, of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to, sh and to share with what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. I'd like to invite the children up for a children's message. Thank you, kids, for coming up. Come on up. I want to ask you some questions about any pets that you might have. Do you guys have? Come on up, you can sit here on the steps. Do you guys have any cats or dogs? Yeah. What do you have? Two dogs, two cats, and 20, how many chickens? 26 chickens, OK. Yeah. You? You have two cats, you used to have hamsters. What about you? All right, the dogs, cats, and chickens again. Do you guys have any cats or dogs? You have a dog? Okay. I actually have two dogs at my house. And I'm curious, have you ever seen your dog or cat chase its tail? Yeah? How many of you have seen a dog or cat chase its tail? That seems pretty silly, doesn't it? I brought my phone out because I have a, a, a video of one doing just that. Do you see, whoops. Do you see that white cat chasing its tail? I'm sorry, I couldn't share this with a bigger group. It looks pretty crazy, doesn't it? It's like chasing its tail and hopping around doing it, and it's doing it very fast. Maybe at coffee hour, we can pass it around. Why is that silly? Yeah. Does it normally do it? Okay. Because it looks weird? Have you ever seen a dog catch its tail and bite it? I've seen a cat do that. And then it's like, ouch, right? What else is it silly? It's because it's like it's never ending. Most of them can't catch their tail. What about, is it silly because they're chasing something they already have. Like, what are they going to do with another tail? Right? They already have a tail. Um, and I think sometimes in life we do that. We chase around and run around after something we already have. And Jesus, when I read the gospel, you'll hear him talking to some people about places of honor and where they sit, like at a dinner party. And in those days, whoever sat closest to the host 
was considered the person with the most honor or you know, they were the most important person. And what Jesus is helping us understand is that's kind of like chasing our tails. We already have one of the most, the most uh, important status already. Status is a fancy word. You are already a child of God, right? When you were baptized, we declared something that's true, and that's that you are a beloved daughter, beloved son of God, and that God loves you forever. So that, that importance that sometimes we chase after is already a given. You are already a child of God, and God loves you and will never leave you, and that's a very important thing. So we can relax sometimes about our status in life, if you will. We don't need to chase after being important because God loves you and God sees you as very important already. So kids, do you want to stand up with me? And we'll fold our hands and bow our heads. I'll invite everybody to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for making us your children. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us. Amen. The kids can go back to your seats. And listen to the longer sermon. I'm actually going to be talking to you as well as the bigger kids at that time as well. If it's comfortable to stand, I invite you to do so as we welcome the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous." The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. You know, in in Jesus' time and in the place when, when Jesus was walking the earth and doing this ministry, when this story was told by him at the Pharisee's leader, the leader of the Pharisee's house, That culture, um, sociologists looking back on it, would would talk about how it was based on something called the honor-shame system. And I just want to do a little bit of teaching about that. Um, When you and I consider doing something wrong or are caught doing something wrong, we often have shame about it. We know intrinsically that it's wrong, and so we have kind of this inner corrective to try and keep us on the straight and narrow. Not, Not everyone, of course. But for most people, um, we may feel guilty about something. And in this time and place that Jesus was teaching, and it's still in some parts of the world today, again, it'd be referred to as an honor shame. So if you got caught doing something, the reason it was bad, if you did something wrong, was you would bring shame on your family. And in their culture, they were always trying to jostle for receiving honor. It was like a currency. And you'll see this all through the Gospels when different people are challenging Jesus about his teaching. 
They're trying to take him down a notch. They're trying to dishonor him or even bring shame to him. He loses currency. He loses value in the eyes of everybody. Um, Whereas, almost always, Jesus one-ups the conversation and wins that little challenge, that challenge to his honor. He usually wins that, and then the people who are bewildered by his explanation go away being taken down. They lose some honor in that exchange. Now, I say all of that to kind of explain the ancient world that Jesus is operating, but here's the thing. I don't think we're that far removed from it. Now, I know I'm preaching to a group of saints here who have a lot of, um, you know, equality in their lives, who treat everybody with respect and honor. But just think back. Now, when I told the kids to listen into this longer sermon, those of us that are older, can you remember back to your school days? And can you remember the lunchroom scene? Is it still true today? Yeah. Yes. There's still this kind of honor-shame system that goes on in a school lunchroom, right? Kids vie for certain seats at certain tables. Some tables are considered where the, I don't even know if they use terms like cool anymore, but the popular kids maybe, maybe there's different cliques. That's the term we used to use. I don't know if it's still current either. You know, it might be the athletic kids. It might be the farm kids. It might be, today it might be the tech kids, the kids that have the latest uh, iPhones. Um, and, and sometimes you'll see kids tease each other. And some of that rises to the level of bullying. Someone gets bullied at school. And in a way, that's, you know, a person who is seeking to get power somehow by taking someone else down. And that's not, that's not good, right? It's not healthy. Well, Jesus comes along, and not only does he give some, like, uh, first century table etiquette. Um, Yeah, well, you're... Okay. Well, you're you're getting ahead of me just a little bit, David. Um, The round table was a chance for the... King Arthur's round table was an example of them trying to find a way to have equality instead of a long table where the king sat at the top and the lowest foot person, Esquire, sat at the far end. But he still got disrespected, King, is what David's saying, King Arthur. But Jesus uh, not only is giving some proper etiquette, saying it's better to be humble and then to be lifted up, but then he goes on and talks to the leader who invited him and is reminding us, and this is, I think, most certainly said repeatedly in Luke's gospel, that in God's kingdom, there is no place of honor that's greater than another place. And that there is no excluding anybody, right? Because you might start with the first thing of honor is to be invited to the party or the banquet or the dinner. And Jesus is saying, invite the people that can't do you any, you know, that aren't, aren't on your social list. In- invite the outcasts because they're included in God's kingdom. And if you read um, Mary's song that we call the Magnificat in Luke 2, or you read about the Beatitudes uh, earlier in Luke's gospel when Jesus is preaching, blessed are the poor, blessed are the hungry, blessed are those who weep. Um, God's kingdom is going to include a place at the table for everybody, for absolutely everybody. And There isn't going to be an in-group or an out-group. There's not going to be a fashionable and unfashionable. Everybody is going to be embraced by God's love, God's generosity, God's abundance. And guess what? Our work as Christians isn't just to somehow say, oh, yeah, those people, I love those people in my heart. Our work as Christians is to manifest the kingdom of God. So to actually do those things that are inclusive. So kids, when I was saying earlier, keep listening to the longer sermon, is maybe to find those kids that are always eating lunch by themselves and go over and sit with them. And, you know, at some point, if you have the ability to do that, invite them to join your table. But in the meantime, go and sit with them. Make a new table. Um, And, you know, I think if you talk to enough adults, that kind of um, 
School lunchroom behavior doesn't end at childhood, right? That sometimes still happens at the break room at the office or at the conference uh, for executives. Uh, you know, whatever level you work, uh, maybe it's the farmers having a cup of coffee at the co-op. You know, maybe there's places of, of honor that uh, there's a hierarchy, a pecking order, whatever you want to say. And as a Christian, you should look at that and say, that's not God's kingdom. God's kingdom is to include everyone and even sometimes to reverse the order. It's kind of like the kids that always had to line up alphabetically. And once in a while, a teacher will say, okay, Z's at the front, A's at the back to mix it up a little bit. Of course, I was an M, so I was always in the middle. It didn't make any difference, right? Um, God's kingdom is full of surprising reverses because God loves everybody, even... You know, if we really understand John 3, 16, God sent God's Son even for the God-hating world. Even those that say they hate God, that doesn't mean God gives up on them. Nor should we. Right? This is the good news, that we can be free. We don't have to chase our tails looking for honor and status. God has given us that. So we can live generously and courageously. You, know, you may have noticed that our confession of forgiveness basically gives a nod to two of our readings. We've had our, one weeks ago, the Good Samaritan story. Sometimes we see the one in need and pass by on the other side, but it also gives a nod to today's reading, right? That we should be inclusive and include everyone at God's table. That opening hymn that we sing, um, here in this place, gather us in, you know, you may know the story behind it. It was commissioned originally for a national convention of the women of the ELCA. And it's one of my favorite, and I know a lot of you like it a lot, for a gathering hymn because it speaks to the importance of what we are about when we gather together. Everyone in God's kingdom, all people. We just have to act like it, right? We have to act like... Let me give another example from school. We had a kid when I was in junior high school that was new to town. He and his family moved from Canada, so he seemed really exotic. Um, his name was Rob. He went by Robbie, too. And, you know, he, he kind of fit in. He wasn't like an outcast, necessarily. But he had this interesting thing. He wanted to call everybody by their name, but start with the word friend. So it'd be like, friend Malik, friend Smith, friend Jones. And instead of picking on him or making fun of him, People started to copy him. And I think that's kind of disarming. If you, upon meeting somebody for the first time or you're still learning their name, to start by saying friend. It's kind of like some of the old religious communities that would refer to each other as brother or sister. When you're in Africa, they often refer to somebody that's older as grandfather or grandmother, even if they're not related. It's a sign of honor. It's considered to be an honorable thing to be a grandparent. Um, what I like about that is you're already thinking about this person as being a family member. And that's the invitation in God's kingdom. These aren't strangers we're with, they're siblings. And we can live life differently than when we take that into account. So this is one of those sermons, one of these passages in the Bible, one of these teachings from God that is at one level simple, be nice to everyone, Live generously, include everybody, that's pretty simple, yet it's hard to do, right? That's why we need the support of each other and uh, the support of the Holy Spirit continually in our lives, which we pray for all the time and which we encounter when we gather together. So my prayer for this place, as it often is, is that we continue to be a warm, inviting, hospitable, generous place, not just within these walls, but in every place that all of you go every day of your life. Amen. If it's comfortable to stand, we'll do so as we sing. Um, as we gather at your table, again, the words will be on the screen. The music can be found as hymn number 522 in the red hymnals. Mm -hmm.
Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray. Uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equality for all. Defy, uh, defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. We pray especially that you bless the work of Lutheran ser services in Iowa. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving. We pray especially for Barb, Audrey, Pat, Olive, John, Howard, Helen, Paul, Darlene, Linda, Mark, Kay, and all those that we name before you now, either out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Grant them your healing and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For St. Petrie Lutheran Church and our ministries, especially the youth ministry that we share with Bergen Lutheran and Grace United Methodist. Prepare children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Especially bless our new youth worker, Joel. Uh, embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all the saints who confess God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
We also ask that you pour out your spirit of blessing on all those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, including Joe, Kelsey, Hope, and Kara. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with one another. You can be seated as soon as uh, you're done with that. And I want to take this opportunity to again thank everyone for their ongoing, continuing, generous support of the ministries of Jesus Christ as we conduct them through here at St. Petrie and our partner ministries. We have plates. We're not passing them yet, but we have plates here in the front as well as one in the back for you to place your offering. There's also other opportunities um, to mail in or to do electronic giving. And uh, let's stand again for this uh, part of the worship service. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear the fruits for, all, for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to be distributing communion this morning with just one station. We'll start here on the lectern side, your right, my left. The ushers will direct you, dismissing from the back. You'll come up the center aisle and return by the side aisle. When this side is done, um, Peg and I will move over to this side, and then we'll commune the pulpit side. This is the Lord's Supper. Everyone's invited. All are welcome to receive. You'll get a bit of bread first to eat, and then a small cup of red wine. If you would prefer white grape juice, simply ask for that, and it'll be given to you. Um, and there's a place, some garbage cans to throw away your empties on the corners there. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks. You may be seated for the announcements. We have a few here. Creation stations open back there. There's a youth programming meeting. It's with uh, both uh, Bergen and, and Grace and us. Um, they're all three meeting here tonight at 6. So this is for anyone. We're hoping to have all of our youth and there, at least one parent, come to that meeting. We really want to hear what we want to focus on for this coming school year. And I think you all would have gotten notification that we just hired a new youth director. His name is Joel Chambers. Um, he just finished a summer at Riverside Bible Camp. And he's got some experience in youth ministry. Uh, grew up at Hope in Ankeny. So we're, kind of, we're really excited. His references were all great. And uh, you can meet him. He's going to come to that meeting tonight. He starts not until September 1st, but he's coming to the meeting tonight. So we hope that you all will come to that. And then um, that picture is just from this last Tuesday. Our quilters donated 20 quilts and pillowcases to um, Luther, back up a second to Lutheran Social Services in um, or in Iowa for use in their refugee resettlement program and other programs caring for youth. We heard some amazing stories. Their church relations director um, Barbara was here. Talk to any of the quilters you've seen that picture. They can tell you. We heard some amazing stories, didn't we, women? I mean, for example, they just helped a group of 10, I think they were all young women, who were being trafficked for work, work trafficking. So it was um, some, somebody was using them to do labor all night long. So these poor kids were basically homeless. They were having to work somewhere. We don't know if it was a factory or a farm or where all night long without sleep, and then they were trying to get themselves to school the next day. So um, LSI is one of those groups that after law enforcement got involved are now caring for these kids so they can get you know, a place to stay. So quilts is one of the ways they show them love and give them something of their own. Um, that's just one of many programs that they use. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll quit talking about that now. And then. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is the upcoming movie a week from tonight out at the Hens. So uh, there's more information in the bulletin. That should be a lot of fun. Um, senior lunches. There's a sign-up sheet in the hallway out here by the offices. Please consider doing that. Um, that's our down at the Senior Center where our, our folks, you know, open to the community, have a lunch there every Wednesday. and. The food's prepared by other people, and we're just there to serve and clean up. So uh, please consider signing up for that. Men's Bible studies will start again this coming Thursday in September, uh, Thursdays at 8 in the chapel. If you'd like to attend that, but that time doesn't work, talk to us, because we're, we're willing to change times, too, if need be. So talk to myself. Um, Rick Stover is one of the more regular ones. Um, Clark Grendy. John hints sometimes. Talk to, talk to me. Love to hear about another time and date if you'd like instead. Parable of the Talents, again, another teaser that's coming up soon. There's some great uh, Riverside Bible Camp events coming up, including those uh, fall recharge weekends. I'm going to talk more about that at a later date, too. Loaves and Fishes, there's some things you can help out with there. Drop it off here. Some fruits and cereals and soaps and stuff. Great. Oh, that's about a guest night salad supper that's coming up at Radcliffe. Yes, and we got a formal invitation to Pastor Scott Johnson's installation as the new bishop of the Nebraska Synod. So I don't know if any of you are interested in traveling out there for that, but uh, certainly I'm sure notes and cards will be much appreciated. And we have a YouTube channel that you can look up the services after they've been recorded. They'll eventually be processed and loaded up there. Right next to the videos of cats chasing their tails. No, that's, that's a different place. So, 
All right, any other announcements from any of you? Yes. Oh, that's right. Uh, I'd like, if possible, those of you that serve on church council to just, we'll meet right after church for five minutes, give you an update on the new hire that, we're, uh, that we've done. And maybe we'll meet in the old nursery downstairs. That'll be a quick and easy place. All right, any other announcements? Thank you for the reminder, Ann. Please stand if it's comfortable as we'll finish our worship service now, beginning with the benediction. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. We sing, This is My Father's World, hymn number 824. We are disciples of Jesus Christ, called to grow in Christ and to invite all to follow him. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.